what's up youtubers so today is tuesday january 24th and i'm definitely ready for some poker so i think last week's vlog was actually a success a lot of friends have let me know that they really thought it was really good and they liked it i got a few suggestions from people that i'm going to implement in this new video and for those of you who i haven't heard from who i don't know uh, please comment below on the video. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. I'm going to play some poker later tonight, but before I go, I thought I'd take you down to one of my favorite spots here in Medford. Uh, so, let's go. So I was going to take you guys down to Badass Coffee, but evidently they're closed. They're supposed to be open until 7.30 today. I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to take you to another place that I like. that was pretty good I went into uh, Malello's and uh, you know I don't understand how vloggers can talk to their own cameras in public places I just don't get it uh, maybe over time I'll become more comfortable I mean as it is when I'm by myself I'm uncomfortable just talking to the camera I'm sure over time that'll get better but man how do they do it they just talk away to the camera like nobody else is there. I mean, a coffee joint probably isn't the best place for that because there's other people in there enjoying their coffee in kind of a quiet setting. And you kind of have to talk at a little bit of an elevated voice just for people to hear what you're saying. So it's just gonna be hard for me. I don't, I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but people are looking at me talking on my phone. Why does that bother me so much? I don't know. <laughs> I think, you know, you know what I think I'm gonna name my poker vlog is the timid poker player because not only am I timid in my poker play I'm not very aggressive when I play poker but in addition to that I'm timid when it comes to filming in front of other people I gotta work on that I know enough of me talking let's go play some poker So again, we are playing in a $25 buy-in tournament with a $10 add-on. It's a dealer appreciation add-on. And we find ourselves in the big blind here. We wake up with a pretty crappy hand and go ahead and fold it because it's been raised ahead of us. Here we're in the small blind and we see four or five of clubs, which is actually a pretty good hand pre-flop. Uh, so we go ahead and limp in. The big blind raises it up to 1,000, which is five times the big blind. He gets one collar, and I just don't really want to play this hand out of position, so I go ahead and fold. Here we find ourselves in the hijack position with a king-jack offsuit. Normally not the best hand to play in early position, but we're in pretty late position, so I go ahead and decide to raise. Both the small blind and the big blind decide to call me in the hand, so we go to a flop. Unfortunately, the flop has three small cards, which doesn't hit me at all, but the small blind and the big blind both check to me, so I go ahead and try a c-bet here to see if I can just take it down. The small blind folds and the big blind calls, so we go to the turn. Still nothing's hit my range, so I go ahead and check behind the big blind. I don't want to lose too much money here. Uh, river comes, I don't hear anything, I just check it behind. I have a feeling he's got something, sure enough he's got two pair, so we muck that hand.
the guy across from me in the flannel is my friend Troy. He saw my first vlog and he decided he wanted to come down to the club just to felt me in the video here. So he calls a lot of my hands and later it kind of backfires on him. Here we're in middle position and we find Ace of Hearts and Jack of Spades. Pretty nice hand. Nobody's raised before us, so we go ahead and raise it up here. I get one caller in the big blind and we go to the flop. Comes out King of Diamonds, Five of Clubs, Three of Spades. The big blind takes a while to make a decision. He finally decides to check. And since he didn't check quickly, I just decide to check behind here. On the turn, we get the Ten of Clubs, so we now have a gut shot straight draw. So I go ahead and toss a bet in, and as soon as I do, the big blind folds. So we win that hand. So what you're saying is I should... Jones, I'm yeah, just like, like how come, how come that didn't happen? Like At this point in the tournament, the blinds are up to 2,000, and I only have about 18,000 in chips, less than 10 big blinds. I look down and find ace king, and so I go ahead and shove all in. And everybody folds except for Mr. Troy, the guy I introduced you to earlier. And remember how I said he wanted to felt me? Well, he calls and he turns over King Queen. A little over no, how much is it? 14,000. Will this be in your this is my chance? I have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take the cameraman out. Yeah, it's filming, buddy. The river comes out ace four seven, so we're ahead. He's not suited, so we don't have to worry about the two clubs that are out there. The turn comes five diamonds, and the river is an ace, so we double up on that hand. And Mr. King Queen down there said he came to felt me, and he didn't get away with it that time. We doubled up through him. Thirty-four. But I'm going to uh, change it and not come back. Did he fold? I, I can never like tell. Five. So in this hand, the blinds are at 1,500 and 3,000, and we're sitting in the big blind. The player in the under the gun position raises it up to 9,000, and it folds around to the late position, which is my uh, friend Troy and uh, he shoves all in. It folds around to me and I find ace king again. So I go ahead and reshove over the top uh, to try to isolate uh, the hand. The under the gun position thinks for a minute and he decides to fold. I turn over my ace king and Again, Troy has king-queen, so it's a case of deja vu. We have the same hand. This time his king-queen is suited, uh, so we have a little more of a sweat. Uh, the flop comes out. Uh, nothing hits either of our hands. Uh, I think there's one diamond, and then on the turn, uh, another diamond comes. So I've got to dodge a diamond or a queen at this point. And uh, neither one of those hits the river, so unfortunately for Troy, uh, the tournament, he gets knocked out. Uh, but we make a nice little haul on this hand. In this hand, I'm in the dealer position, and I have Jack-10 offsuit. Uh, at this point, it is folded to me, and I just have the blinds behind me, so I go ahead and raise to three times the big blind, which is 12,000. The uh, small blind and the big blind both fold, so we take that pot down. And that's one thing that you can do periodically in a tournament is um, just raise your big blind, especially if you have a pretty decent hand um, in most cases. Nobody's going to wake up with anything, and you can take down a pot.
Here we had ace, king of diamonds and had called the all in of someone who had pocket tens. Unfortunately, their pocket tens held up and we lost a good portion of our stack in this hand. At this point in the tournament, we are three handed and I have a relatively small stack compared to the other two. I wake up with ace, queen and go ahead and shove. Unfortunately, the small blind has pocket jacks and he calls. And the flop, turn, and river do not come out in our favor. So here we end up being the bubble boy for the tournament. And it just goes to show you can't win them all. When the blinds are this big in a tournament, there's not much you can do than shove on a nice looking hand like that.